Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and we are back with our Friday freebie. And since I didn't give you any Friday freebies last week, this week you've got four pages. You've got two pages that are printable. It's the envelope, and then I made some stamps. And then this is the larger envelope, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that one. And then I made two templates. You can put this in your printer, print off on some different papers if you want, or you can just trace around this on a paper that you want to use for an envelope. So it's just good to have some templates every now and then. So I have gone ahead and cut mine out. Let's see, I think this is the right one. Nope, that's the wrong one. I, at first I made them, and I actually made one upside down, so I had to redo it. But I saved the one I made upside down. I'll use it. And I'm going to score mine just because I have problems folding straight. So I am going to score it. Let's see. Now when I cut mine out, I cut off a little bit more right here than what the template shows. But you can cut it any way that you want. Sometimes I have to go back and trim it a little bit. So all I'm doing is just laying it on here and just making my lines. Let's see. And then my top up here. I'm just going to fold right down through there. And I may have to trim off a little bit more, but if I do, that's fine. So we'll go ahead and fold. Yeah, I tend to do a lot better when I score. It's still not perfect, but it's, be it's better than my folding. My folding is unbelievably crooked. Okay. Let's see what that looks like before we do any burnishing. Okay, I think that's going to work. Looks like it's going to work. Now, if you want this to be shorter, you can just trim that off more. And I am hoping I've got my camera corrected. Um, I had a little help this morning from a tech guy. <laughs> and he, I had some things set on wrong settings, so he has kind of corrected everything. Okay, it looks like he's got it all corrected. So hopefully my videos will be clearer. I apologize for the last few videos that were off. He said, you do realize that you had some of those settings really off, don't you? And I said, well, I don't know how it got off. He said that this camera, it's, it's got a very sensitive touch screen. And he said, sometimes you could have just been turning it off and on and accidentally hit the wrong button. He said, that's the only bad thing about these cameras. It's the, with the touch screen, it's real easy to touch the wrong button. Okay, so there is our envelope right there. Isn't that cute? This is the smaller one. I'm going to go ahead and burnish. And then I want to ink around mine, of course, like we do. Someone asked me the other day to show this, our ink trays. I don't have the clear one put together, but it's just like this, only this is clear instead of wood. But I have a little piece of plastic that I just cut out of some scrap. I think I maybe off of a paper pad or something. And I have that in the bottom so that I don't, you know, get it all inked up. And I can just take that out and replace it when I need to. Plus, if you put your dauber right down in there on the wood, the wood's going to soak up any ink that you have on your dauber. And you don't want that. So the plastic is really good because it doesn't soak it up. It leaves it on top. And it doesn't make my dauber go dry as quick. And then your little ink pad just sits in there like that. Now, I don't even have mine glued. Uh, you can glue yours together. I, mine fits so tight I didn't have to glue it. But we do have these in the wood and also in the acrylic. So I just thought I would show that while I was pulling it over here because I had a couple of people who asked, could I show how it held the ink? Now, I don't know what other ink pads it'll hold. I, I use Tim Holtz mainly, so that's what's in mine. But it perfectly fits the Tim Holtz. And it doesn't take up a lot of room on my desk, and that's what I like. I don't like... When it, it, something takes up a lot of room because, as you know, my desk is always pretty well full of something anyway. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and ink that, I think. 
I think I am going to fold this down just a little bit. And the reason being is I just want that to be a little bit shorter right there. Yeah, I like that better. So I folded that down just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off these sides. If I find my pencil, I can just mark them. And then I can trim those off and they won't show. And you can do all of this in the beginning if you want. I just, I do things backwards a lot of days. This is some very beautiful collage paper that I'm put together. I just think it's gorgeous. And I may do a complete kit out of this. I love this paper. Maybe we got that folded straight enough that I can go ahead and glue that down. So let's glue that down. So you guys let me know if the camera is showing up better. If everything is more clear than it was. Like I said, I really do apologize for the mess. A lot of times I can't even tell if it's clear until I start to edit. Because my little screen on the camera is about like this. So... <laughs> And my eyes are not the greatest in the world, so <laughs> sometimes I can't tell until I start editing. And then I'm like, oh, no. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put my little flaps on the inside. So with the template, you're going to be able to use that template on whatever paper you might have. Even if you want to make an envelope out of some scrapbook paper, you can use that template. I printed off, printed mine off on a really heavy cardstock. And then when I trim it out, I can just put that template straight down on whatever paper I want to use and do it like that. Trim it, you know, trim it out and do it like that. I can also just print it off on another digital if I want and then I know exactly where to cut around the edges. Okay. So that seems to be working pretty good. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that better. And I don't mind that I have that little bit of white showing there. Now, another thing that you can do is print on the back of these envelopes if you want so that you'll have, you know, your print on the inside as well as the outside. I'm not going to worry about it because these are going to be stuck down in a little pocket in my journal, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I probably will ink this, and all I do when I ink it is I just put, get my dauber and put a little ink on there and just go around on it. Or you could cover it with paper. You could do it any way that you want. But see, that right there is good enough for me don't mind that at all. It just looks like I coffee dyed it. So there is one of our little envelopes already made. Now we can make a little closure here if we want. We might do that in a minute. I'm going to lay that aside. Move my little ink pad out of the way. And then I'm going to show you this large one. Now this large one is meant to go in the center of a signature or somewhere in your journal. I will, I'm going to put mine in the center I think. And I'll show you how we'll do that. I know I'm going to show how to use these little clusters too. I know I said yesterday on the video, I'm going to show you how to use them. And then I went right through the video and forgot all about it. So guess what? We'll do that today. So don't go anywhere. Stick around. A little, do a lot of demoing today. And then our little top here, our lid as my husband used to call it. He called it the lid on the envelope. <laughs> Alright, so we've got that. And see, I didn't print on this side, but if I'm the one that I'm going to put in my journal, I will print on this side. So all you want to do for this, since you're going to be putting this in the center of your journal or in your journal somewhere as a page, all you want to do for this is fold this up. And I'm going to go ahead and fold all my other pieces too, just so they'll be folded. I 
sent this template to Melina and I sent her the first one that I made. <laughs> and then I, I realized what I had done when I printed it out and so I sent her an, an update. Hopefully she'll get the update. If she don't, she'll say, Mother, you got this upside down. <laughs> All right, let's just say this is a page in our journal. Maybe in the center of your journal. And all I would do is take this and put it in just like that. The little fold together with that. I'd stitch it in and then after you stitch it in, then you can close your envelope. So after you stitch your signature in, then you can close up your envelope. And of course I'll trim off a little bit of that to close mine. But that then you'd have this in the center of your signature and see what i'm talking about so you basically are using this as a page this is the center of my signature pretend and then i'm going to stitch it here here and here so then there's my signature when i open this up to the center i would glue that down and then do my flap over and then i have an envelope in the center of my signature so that's what I'm going to use this one for. Now I'm going to go ahead, instead of cutting this off, I'm just going to fold it over. Okay, I have a question for you guys. How many of you guys out there dream constantly? Now some people, believe it or not, do not dream. My mother-in-law never dreamed. She said she could never remember having a dream in her life. Now, if she did, she never remembered them until her husband passed away. And when he passed away, was she, she worried about him, the situation that he passed away. She worried about him trying to contact her. And so she constantly was, you know, wondering if... He had tried to contact her or not, or, you know, he called her help and she didn't hear him. And so she prayed that she would dream about him and dream whether he had asked for help or not and she wasn't there. And she dreamed then and remembered it. But anyway, back to the dreaming thing. I dream constantly every night. I wish I didn't. It seems like I relive my whole life in my dreams. And, and I wake up so tired. I want to know if there's any way you can stop dreaming. <laughs> and, and I know you, <laughs> I know there's a way you can stop. You just don't have, don't have any memory anymore. I guess I should appreciate being able to dream. But oh, I just don't want to dream so much, maybe. Because so, sometimes I have these crazy dreams. And I'll, like I said, I relive my childhood. And I relive... You know, we're passing away and in the hospital, and I, I have just dreams that I don't want to remember. Like last night, I had some doozies last night, and I woke up this morning, and I was so tired. I felt like I had run a race all night long. I never have understood why you dream anyway. I know it's your brain just kind of thinking about the things that you don't want to think about in your conscious time, but... Whew. I just soon it not. So let me know if you dream. And also, I read an article not too long ago. I don't know how true it is. You know how you can read those articles. Who knows if it's true or not. But I read an article that said some people dream in color and some people don't. I didn't know that. I don't know if I dream in color or not. Never have really paid attention. But let me know. It'd be interesting to find out. Now this is on the top of one of the pages. I had a little bit extra room. So I just put some, made some stamps and put on the top. So let's cut a few of these out. I won't necessarily use them on there because that is nice and full already. But I think they'll be nice to use in our journals or maybe on a planer envelope or a planer paper. And these are just some little, I don't know, these are called pinking shears. They don't necessarily cut exactly where they need to. So sometimes I go back in and I'll just offset them a little bit and make them cut that extra part out of there. 
But if you had some that were actually made for stamp cutting, that'd be neat. But I don't worry about that little white that much anyway, because guess what? I ink it. And I'll just ink it up. But I found a clear, well, I say clear, I found a white stamp template that just was white and the edges and had nothing in it. So I went ahead and made up some using this same background. Because I've always wanted some stamps that look like that. Also, you can print these in different sizes if you want smaller or whatever. Just adjust your printer. And I know I have quite a few that say that they don't have a printer, so they can't print digitals and freebies and things like that. It is coming up close to the Black Friday holiday thing sale. I got my first printer on Black Friday and I paid $19 for it. And believe it or not, it printed better than the printer that I have now that costs like $500. So look for those deals. A good HP inkjet printer, if you can get one for $19 bucks. and then I use the HP ink program which I have always have a link for below my videos. And I save thousands and thousands of dollars a year on ink because they actually give you the first few months of your cartridges for free, especially if you sign up through my link. <laughs> and then I get a month free if you sign up through my link. But, I mean, you get your ink delivered right to your door. You get it delivered before you need it. I mean, it is, it's the best program that I think is out there anywhere. I was having to go like once a week and buy ink cartridges. And now I never go anywhere to get them except to my mailbox. There we go. Got those cut out. Turn this computer off. Sorry about that. My computer just kept dinging. I'm hoping it's orders. <laughs> we haven't really had a lot of orders this week. We had, you know, we had that sale and we had a ton. And then this week it slowed down, which I understand. Kids are going back to school, last minute vacations, holidays. So, and we have a new shipment of supplies coming in Monday. I know we're low and out of a lot of things. But we have a new shipment coming in Monday that should have tons of new items on there. Just trying to get some of those giblets off of my desk. I have people who laugh at me when I call it giblets. Okay, see that white? Let me hold it up. Let it focus. See that white around? You can ink it. And then nobody's the wiser. I don't want to have to take the time to go through and make sure I've got every, every one of them cut exactly on the spot. So I just ink them and cover up any little bit of that white that's showing. Okay, I'll ink the rest of those off camera, but let's just show, let's say this one. If this was a planar portion, we could put it right there. Or you could put it on here. You can always print them smaller. Print two to a page and they'll be smaller. You can put them on little areas like this. Or, like I said, if you, let's just say, this is our journal and we wanted to use some in here. Let's find a page, maybe. Well, we could use it on a page like this. Put a stamp on there. Wouldn't that be cute? It goes good with that page, too. Or, let's say on this side, you can put one there. Or you can put them on your embellishments that you make. Let's say we wanted to put one on here somewhere. A little tag that we make. We could put one there. So there's a lot of different things you can do with your little stamps. Now let me show you what I didn't show you yesterday. Maybe those so I don't lose them. Drag them off on the floor. Alright, let's find one that will... This blue one will go with this journal. This is a blue journal. 
if I wanted to put something on this page, since it's kind of plain, and you can journal on that, but I would, lots of times, I might put it like this and glue around here and here, and then you would have a tuck spot, and I'd let this stick out just a little bit so you got that frayed edge there. Matter of fact, I kind of like it there. Let's just go ahead and put it on there. I'm going to leave it. Let's, let me get my other glue. My fabric glue. I'm finishing up this journal for someone now, so I can just add this one in there. It's got the blue going. And I think I want to put it. And I, I glued that all the way down. So that was kind of silly, but I did it anyway. And it's already done, so we're going to leave it. But if you wanted to have it as a tuck, you could just leave it unglued here in the middle. Just glue here and here. And then you could tuck something under. We'll do the next one that way. So see, then that will stick out just a little bit. And give you just a little bit more interest in your journal and on your pages. I like that. And then let's see. Let's put in let's try another one, maybe. Let's try maybe one on this page. Let me find one that will go. Alright, here is a blue one. Now this one does have a little flower on there. So I might not necessarily put that one down here. I would put it where that flower hung off. That would be a lot easier. That one matches too much, too close. Right, this one looks cute. There we go. We can do that one as a little corner tuck. Put that one there. Now this time I'm going to hold it like this so I know not to glue. Let's see. We just want to glue here and here. Sometimes I get overexcited about my gluing and I glue stuff that I shouldn't glue. All right, there we go. These are the ones that we made yesterday with the buttons on them. Now you've got a little side tuck that you can tuck something in. I would definitely wait till all that dries, but that would hold a little tag or something. And see, it's on the inside of the page, so it doesn't stick out. So that's two ways. Let's do another one, maybe. Let's see. Let's go toward the back. We'll do another one on this page. I like putting them on the plain pages because they are, to me, they cover up a little bit, but yet leave you plenty of journal space. Let me find one that's a little bit wider. Oh, that one's cute. See, I like that yellow bird with that flower. Now, I'll show you what we'll do with this one. We won't necessarily put this one straight down. Let me grab a little glycine bag. Okay, we're going to glue this glycine bag down. And make it into a pocket. I am using my Barely Arts glue. It doesn't make the glossine pucker like the art glitter glue will. So let's put that right there. Now the trick is when you do glossine or when you do vellum or anything with your art glitter glue, you need to really press that glue down. Press it into the material. I started to say fabric, but it's not the paper. And see, my edges are not all crinkly. And now we're going to take this little guy. I love that bird on that one. And I think I want to glue him down right there. And then when I put a tag in there, you'll still be able to see part of the tag. So I'm just going to glue him all the way down. We are out of Barely Arts right this minute, but we have more on order. And it will be in hopefully very, very soon. We sold completely out when we had our sale. Let's see, that one has a flower on it, but it's kind of flat. So that's going to work on that. Oh, my little bird. My little beak on my bird sticking up. 
All right, so we've got that on there. And then if you, I don't think this tag will work. Maybe, yeah, it will. So if when you put a tag in behind that, you can still see the tag through the glossine bag, but you've got a beautiful pocket. Now that one wouldn't necessarily work because it has a lot of pink in it. Let's see if we have one that has any blue that's already made up. I don't think I do. Now I have this one, but it has pink as well. But anyway, you see what I'm talking about. You can still see the images and everything through the bag, but then you've got that on there. So that's three ways you can use them. And then if you wanted to, if you have one that's pretty large, if you wanted to, you can cut it. But I don't necessarily want to cut mine. I like them kind of the way that they are, the size that they are. Okay, I don't have any more that, well, I have one more that has blue in it, but it has that flower. So that would need to go maybe on this side and then let the flower stick out past the pages. You can also put them on a tag. Let's just say this is a tag that I'm making, which it basically is. I'm going to put a piece of lace down first on this tag. This is the front side, so we'll put it like that. Oops, a little bit crooked there, Edith. Someone sent a message and asked, was my name Eve, E-V-E, -E, or E-E, -E, the letter E, or Edith? Well, my name is actually Edith, E-D-I-T-H. But for years, when I taught Sunday school, my little little kiddos couldn't say Miss Way, Miss Ray very well. So they would call me Miss E. Miss E. So it kind of stuck with me. And it, um, over the years, even adults started calling me Miss E. So <laughs> it kind of stuck there. So I just say E in my intro because it's easier than trying to say Edith. Hey guys, this is Edith with Scrapbooking with Me. It's a little bit harder to say that. It's a mouthful. So I just say, this is E. And two, you know I like Elvis, so he always went by E. <laughs> but either way, you can call me whatever you want, as long as you don't call me a dirty word. I don't care. Eve, E, I answer to all of them. Okay, so we'll put that lace trim on that. Not pretty. That's a very, very old trim. Then I think I might put this one on there and just put it in the middle. I think that'll make that tag pretty. Or maybe a little bit below the middle. Then we can put a label or something up there. So that's another way you can use your little clusters. And I'm sure there are tons more ways that I haven't even thought about out there. These are just some of the ways that I use them. And I like to use little scraps of doilies, uh, material, fabric doilies or regular doilies, paper doilies. I use either or. That's a little scrap of a piece of vintage lace. And then, let's see, that's a little scrap of a piece of a wedding dress. This is a little scrap piece of a vintage doily, fabric knitted, I don't know, crochet knit, I don't know which one. There we go, we've got that down. And then we could put a little label or something up here, do you think? Or we might put one of our little tickets. I kind of don't mind that. Let's go ahead and ink it up so I don't cover up that white. And this will be just a simple, simple tag. There we go. And in my Sugar Bell bottle, I do have Fabri-Tac. Oh, I had someone ask me that the other day, too. I think I answered them, but I'll just let everybody know. So there is that on there. I think that's cute. Now, let's go ahead and 
put our ink on here because this paper also inks up very well. And you know I like to cut off these little corners with this little corner rounder because it makes it, the tag so much easier to slide down in your pockets. They don't have that little piece of point there to hold them, catch on everything. So I just nip it off with our little corner rounder. So there's a sweet little tag. I like that. And then we'll put a piece of what we put in the top. Let me look and see what I've got. Let's punch a hole first though. Now punching the hole through the fabric is not the easiest game in the world, but it can be done. There we go. Um, let me think. What would we put on there? Or just some white seam binding, maybe? All I have here on my desk is white and purple, and I don't think that calls for purple, so let's just do white. And there we go. We have our little tag made. And see with that cluster, once you put that down, you've basically got a lot of the decorating already finished. Now I made my clusters pretty large. These are actually, let's see. Um, these are about three inches, most of them. Yeah, they're about three inches. And that's a good size for me. I also like to make smaller ones, but this is a good size for doing things like this. Now if you want to make tabs for your journal then I would make the little clusters a little bit smaller and then you could put your little tabs right here, your little tab clusters. I think I actually have one out here somewhere. I have a few that I've done, not completely finished, but they're they're made. Let's just say this was a little cluster. It is a little cluster but it's just a little circle cluster. You could use those for tabs. Just put it on the edge like that. Glue it down here and then that part would stick off. Now you'll need to make sure that the back paper is a paper that doesn't look too bad in your journal. And then these are some fabric clusters. You can also do this. This is just a little scrap piece of fabric. A little, two little flowers, or three little flowers, another little scrap piece of lace, and then just folded it over and glued it onto a paper clip. And this would go in your journal. Let's see. Let's say we put it here like that. And then you could also tuck something under that. Like if you wanted to tuck your little envelope under that, you could. So that's another cluster idea. Let's see. See if we have any, any other ideas that I haven't told you yet. Now this is just a little cluster of fabric that I did. I'll cut that off because I don't need that that long. This is just some scrap pieces of fabric, a piece of book page, and then another little scrap piece of fabric glued on top, or stapled on top, and then I stapled them all together. And then if I was going to use this in this journal, which I'm not because it's purple, but if I was, I would probably put it on a page and just either put it like this or like this as a tab, something like that. So lots of different ways you can use those as well. And see, I always have something started. This is a little cluster that I haven't finished. It's got some lace, some fabric, and then a little tag in the back, and I have a little bulb clip on it, and I'll go ahead and finish that up, and that'll be ready for a journal. This one, I just did a little stitching on. It's just little scrap pieces of fabric, and I just stitched those together on there. There may be a button or something, and that would be a great tab. As a matter of fact, that goes good on that page. Hmm. I might have to finish that one, put that in there. Let's just put a button or something on this and finish it off. Let me look and see what I have right here. I don't want to have to get up and go dig, so let's see what we got. 
available. Well, I have a little flower. I don't have a button. Hmm. I think that's two little flowers. I could put those on there and then put it down. Just put a little glob of glue right in the middle. And then these little flowers are very, very flat. So they're not going to take up a lot of room. And then I would glue that. I think I would glue it right there. Let's see. Let's see if it looks better on another page. I'm kind of liking it on that page that we started with. I like it on that page, actually. Okay, we could put it right there. And I'm just going to put glue on this side, not on all of it. And the back I don't mind because it is fabric and it's stitched. So I don't mind the back looking like it does. If you want, if you don't want that to show on the back of yours, you can always just put another piece of fabric or paper or something on the back of it. Whoops. Threw that down. Okay, we'll put that there. And see, I'm leaving some of that hanging off. I do have a paper towel. And then, see that's what you see on the back and I don't mind that because that's just that frayed material. But you could also put something there if you wanted. And then that would be a tab that will show out the side of your journal. I like that and I got it just below that one. That's great. And then I'll put another one down here somewhere. That's just a few ways to use your clusters. Also, your freebie for Friday. I hope you got some new ideas and some new ways to use clusters. And don't forget to go over to the blog and download your freebie. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.